Hey, good morning, everybody. I just wanted to come out this morning and do a garden update. The last update that I did on where everything was, uh, well, I think was on June 17th. So we've had a lot of growth since then. And just wanted to kind of show you where things stood and what was going on. Um, I didn't bring the GoPro out this time because the, the sound doesn't pick up as good. So I'm gonna try to carry around this bigger camera and show you some things. So we'll see how all that goes. I was trying to get out here earlier um, and get started earlier before it got too much sun glare coming down because it's kind of a overcast foggy morning, but the, it's starting to burn off now because I was a little too slow <laughs> getting out here. Um, so let me take you on a quick walk around and show you what's going on. So my basil plants have been going nuts this year. Uh, they've d done really well. Um, I've already harvested about a pound and uh, dried all that, which uh, I had already done the video on that. I think I need, I'm a little overdue. I need to get out here and harvest it all again because I think I probably have at least another pound's worth off of my plants. This is just one of them. I've got several throughout the gardens. Um, <clears throat> but this time I'm going to try to ferment it. Uh, I have a book on fermenting vegetables and they have a recipe in there for making a, like a fermented basil paste that you can then use like in pestos or as a base for other sauces and stuff. I thought that looked pretty interesting. So I'm going to try that out and when I do I'll do a video on that so you can kind of see, see how that goes. My tomato plants have uh, gone crazy. Some of them have been, actually most of them are a bit unruly with the vines. Uh, I'm at the point of the season where I really don't keep up with trying to get the suckers anymore. Most of my plants are probably a good three or four feet tall. Some uh, on the other rows have actually gotten above the cattle panel tre trellis, so they're probably more like five feet tall. Um, so, and they, there's tons of tomatoes in here. Unlike the last video, I now know what all the varieties are. This is some of the pink, or the Berkeley pink tie-dye right in here. There's a batch of them in there. Um, some more down over here. But all the plants have got different batches of them on down throughout. Can you guys see me? So this is the honey boat squash. Um, and this has just gone crazy. It has spread out over this bed and is way up over uh, the, the cattle panel hoops that I have and has now started to, uh, looks like almost growing down the other side. It's hard to tell from this angle. Actually, I think it's grown up to the top, but I've already got some honey boat squash coming in here. Uh, and there's all kinds of blossoms. Uh, a lot of them have been uh, male flowers, but you know, I already showed you that I've got some squash in there and um, I'm seeing more female flowers coming in up here uh, and even as high up as up here. So the, the butternut squash on this side is just starting to get some little flowers in here. There is some male flowers down here in the bottom but I haven't seen any squash on this side yet. They're still just kind of starting with it with their squash. So, or with their blossoms, but it's pretty exciting. I've got a uh, honey boat um, squash coming in right here. So that'll be one that hangs down. And these are still some vines, so I can't tell if I'll have more hanging down. Got all kinds of bumblebees in here that bury themselves in the flowers and honeybees. So it's kind of neat to see. This is one of my ring of fire peppers. There's a lot of peppers in there. You, I don't know if you can really see it on the camera, but you see different ones in there. And um, they are not turning red yet, 
but they there's quite a few buried all in that plant and even more blossoms coming on they are a pretty prolific plant so I'm pretty excited about that I can make a lot more hot pepper powder this year which we use all winter long in cooking and all kinds of stuff to spice stuff up it's it's pretty amazing stuff more batches of tomatoes in here um, the I think I've kind of got through the bit of blossom end rot that I had I pulled off the ones that I saw and all the rest of them seem to be pretty good uh, this one here had some cat facing on it which is when two blossoms fuse together and they kind of end up with like a um, couple of tomatoes that are that are sometimes fused and, and they make your tomatoes look kind of goofy and I've got several of those in here but you know it does uh, affect the way the the way it looks and there'll be a section in your tomato that you can't really use but overall the tomato is good and uh, depending on how bad it is you can normally still keep those and use at least a portion of the tomato but if you're doing something for like a farm market that might not be something that would sell as well if you're trying to sell it but for home use you know we don't care about that my poblano plants are very tall and skinny and they uh, they have peppers coming in and on them that you can kind of see right there I've picked one so far there was an early one that came in but the rest of these are are still in process um, so I did have to tie these up kind of connect them to the the cattle panel trellis I just run some twine in there to kind of help hold them up because they tend to flop over especially after it rains and even more so once they get a whole bunch of peppers on them when they start getting heavy so the tomatoes are still kind of growing in and through all over this stuff uh, and intertwining with my peppers <clears throat> so sometimes it's kind of hard to find them but overall they all seem to be doing very well and you know i've got a pretty thick amount of tomatoes and peppers all down through here and then down this side and up here is the long beans and on this particular arch they've created the canopy one side so far has grown thicker than the other but um, these here the blossoms are just starting to come in whereas the one this arch is not so quite full of leaves but there's tons of blossoms and I've already been picking uh, which was a video I did the other day on these long beans and look it's only been two days and now I've got a bunch more in here I need to pick they're such a neat looking uh, bean and you get so much out of them uh, you know you cut up about four beans and you got enough for a meal for one person uh, depending on what length that you pick them so the beans on this side have really been taking their time this was the new bed that I built with the new dirt so and I didn't put any amendments of uh, the rabbit manure so I'm thinking that that's probably what the difference is because the other beds all had rabbit manure in them so this one's growing much slower um, but it is, you know, kind of getting up the arch here. And there's already beans coming in on this one. Um, so eventually, you know, it'll get up there and, and cover the rest of this, I think. Um, the hummingbirds love this. They're in here all day long. I come out to the garden throughout the day and check on stuff. And there's always at least probably two hummingbirds in here that are flying along on these flowers or hitting all the flowers. So I really like that more basil and stuff down here oh and check it out my thai purple eggplant has finally started to put some height on it man they stayed tiny for so long when i took that last garden update video they were just little teeny things and i noticed today that i've got my first blossom on this biggest one down here Let's see if i can right there can you guys see the block it's kind of hidden a little bit by the stem but first blossom so looks like I may get some eggplant after all now that they've started 
Um, and so far the bug damage has been minimal on this variety. Um, I have not seen too much problem with flea beetles, which is normally what always just gives me all kinds of problems when it comes to eggplant. So, uh, I mean, there's some bug holes in the leaves, but very minimal. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that these are, are growing here. I uh, still have a t tiny one down here at the end. The little teeny dill that was growing here uh, has popped up, and while it's not as big as the stuff that was in um, the zucchini bed, it, you know, it's got some size to it and got some flowers on it, so I'm going to have to harvest some of that. This is a lemon yellow jalapeno, and there is a massive amount of jalapenos in there. Let me see if I can get a shot of that. It's got all those jalapenos in there. This plant is just loaded with them. And they haven't started turning yellow yet, but they should start that, I think, pretty soon. Last year I made a homemade hot sauce with these that is almost gone. So I am going to ferment some more again this year and make another hot sauce because I have that with eggs all the time and it's delicious. So the butternut squash is gone insane. Um, this is also grown all the way up over this one and down the other side. Although I did make the mistake that the squash I planted on this side, the scallop squash, is not vining. It's a bush plant. So I did not research that appropriately when I planted those. And these plants here have seemed to have been struggling. They actually look pretty good today, better than they have in this past week. And there is a bunch of scallop squash in there, little ones that are coming on. down in there and there's another one down in there but I noticed this morning I came out because one of the leaves looked pretty um, dead and when I looked down to pull it off the base of it looked like uh, it had been hit with a squash borer bug um, which is the squash borers are, are different than the squash bugs that I just did the video on that I posted yesterday um, so, I hope I'm not going to have to combat the borers as well, so I'm going to keep an eye on that. But yeah, the um, butternut squat, I mean, look, look how big these leaves are. I mean, there's my hand. You know, I mean, that's one leaf, so pretty cool, got them vining out all over the place and I see a squash bug up there um, although the squash bugs have why I do see them on these plants they haven't done very much damage yet so they've been sticking mostly to uh, annoying my zucchini over here on this other side of the um, scalp squash is this Mexican red torch sunflower which is just moving along it grows really slow but it's way bigger than it was a month ago so i'm not i don't remember how big these get but hopefully it has enough time to get to its full height and bloom and we'll see how that goes down this side is just more tomatoes these are looking kind of rough now i have tied up several of them but the vines, again, have not cooperated with the way I wanted to. And, and really, I, I guess I should have worked uh, quicker on intertwining them into the cattle panel trellis. That might have saved me a little bit of heartache. But um, they are still, I mean, some of them are growing up through there. Um, but again, these tomatoes have stayed smaller. Um, and I, I think it's the soil in this bed that just didn't have enough amendments in it because the, all the other plants are, you know, at least a couple feet taller. And then down here, got some uh, more of those beans that are going up over that hoop. And on the edge, I had thrown in some zinnias, and I just wanted to see what they would do here. I didn't even plant them in the dirt. I just kind of moved some of the mulch aside and th 
grew some seeds in there and almost all of them came up. So we'll see what they do. The zinnias here were planted, um, I think about the same time, within a day or so. They're much taller, probably because I put them actually in the soil and not just in some mulch. So they had a little bit more nutrients to get them started, but they are starting to get their first blooms on them. Um, that's the first one that popped open today. And so the can I also had candy tufts in there, but those were older seeds and I don't think any of them sprouted. Either that or because I kind of put everything in here so thick that maybe the zinnias just kind of blotted them out. But I'm pretty sure, as far as I can tell, this is all zinnia. Uh, I did have to pull two of my cabbage because when I put my tool over them, I had left a spot that was open and some cabbage worms got in there. Um, so I pulled those two affected plants that had a bunch of worms, but these other two seem to be doing well. They each have, it's hard to see through the um, tool because it's wet from the rain last night, but um, they, there's, I've got two cabbage heads going on. Uh, the rest of this bed, I had put beets and Swiss chard. However, uh, the seeds I did not notice. Somehow they got mixed in with my other stuff. They were from like five years ago. Only about four of the beets sprouted. And the rabbit that visits my garden from time to time has got in here and eaten all the leaves off of them but uh, i think what i'm going to do is just save this for uh, my fall garden and i'm going to start some plants inside here that i'll transplant out and fill in this whole set section especially once i harvest this cabbage looks like i've got a couple of watermelon plants sprouting in here i'm not really sure what that's about uh, but they're a little late for getting started, and I didn't plant them, so volunteer something or other. Uh, I'm not positive that it's watermelon, but the leaves kind of look like watermelon. But anyway. So this is the regular green beans that I planted for Mitzi, and they completely have taken over this whole trellis, and they were growing way up over the top, and had like these long vines popping out. And so we strung up a couple of wires. Mitzi had the idea that maybe we could try this. So we connected the wires over here to the monkey bar trellis where the scarlet runner beans have started coming up. And look, actually the scarlet runner beans, the first little blossoms there. Um, but they're, you know, the scarlet runners still have a ways to go. But here we've got these green bean vines that are coming all the way out almost to the trellis. So that's kind of cool how it's working out. Then down below is more Swiss chard that I've got growing down here. I've already harvested a bunch, uh, over two pounds of that, and I've got to get out here, I think today, and I've got a lot more to cut. So that leaf there is especially pretty huge. I have seen where the rabbit's been in here and eaten off a couple of leaves, but overall hasn't been too bad. The green beans do have some Japanese beetle damage on the tops. They've already done quite a number on our grapevines. Uh, after that grapevine project that I did, and you see, look what they did to these leaves. And I don't know if you saw on my Facebook, or on our Facebook page where we were out here knocking them off into a bowl of water and then feeding them to the chickens. Um, and then yesterday, up at the front of our yard, far away from the garden, we put a beetle bag. And now I'm not seeing hardly any uh, beetles in the garden. I mean, they've already done a number on these leaves, but there's new leaves still coming in and we still have plenty of grapes growing down through here. Uh, but it looks like most of the beetles are gone. A little bit of grapes there. Got grapes all down through here. So we'll see, see how they do. This blueberry bush is done. Picked everything off of that. And 
This one I've picked off of twice and now it looks like the last ones are about ready to be picked. So I need to take the tool off and pick those. Now granted we didn't get a whole lot of blueberries this year. Maybe a half a pint. We might have three quarters of a pint by the time we're done. But considering that we've never gotten any because the cat birds always ate them all, putting this tool on really saved uh, the crop. You know, we were a little late putting it on, so we'd already lost some, but we were pretty excited that we actually got to pick blueberries this year and we'll have a small amount to eat. So the tool was definitely worth it. The zucchini bed, which I've had several videos on, on for various subjects already, um, but we've had probably, I don't know, seven or eight zucchini we picked so far. I have two or three more in there right now with plenty of flowers. Um, uh, more squash bug eggs. Look at that. Oh. So I've got to get in here again this morning and check all the leaves and start scraping squash bug eggs. I have to spend, I think I spend about a half hour a day doing that, going through every single leaf. And then the dill that I've got growing in here. And there's sunflowers mixed in here too. Um, let me get over here to the other side. These are the teddy bear sunflowers that are coming up. These don't get very tall. It actually looks like they might start be forming a flower there here soon. I don't think that I would mix these sunflowers in with the squash. I always forget how big my zucchini plants get and they've kind of overcrowded out the sunflowers, but sunflowers are hanging on. I've got three of them in here, so we'll see how they do. The herb bed that I rebuilt, not a whole lot going on in here. Um, I had planted some atomic carrots in here. Not a single one came up, I think, because it was so hot for two or three weeks, and carrots don't do well when it comes to hot weather. Um, also, not I think within a few days of me putting this bed in, um, we went away for three or four days up to the property and so I wasn't here to water it and I think some of the seeds just didn't make it because it was really hot and dry but I got a bunch of cilantro that's way over planted in there um, that's popped up and I've got more scarlet runner beans that I put up in here and they are now starting to grow up underneath this little old wood trellis that I have um, there's still some oregano hanging on down here and that there I think is some strawberry calendula that I planted that I think is coming up but I'm gonna add I think some radishes in here and maybe some more cilantro that isn't so uh, congested I'm gonna space them out a little bit better I just kind of threw seeds in there this time cucumbers uh, have been really struggling because they were planted so late and there's been tons of cucumber beetles and so normally by now I've already been canning pints upon pints of pickles, but not this year. I did pick our first two cucumbers yesterday, and I've got those marinating in the fridge right now uh, with some uh, long beans and onion and vinegar and spices. Um, but there's a lot of flowers on them. You can see there's a ton of bug damage What these cucumber beetles do these things. Um, I've had multiple leaves die off, but there is the, the hope of a lot of flowers that they still might do something. And actually, I mean, I got a bunch of little cucumbers in here, so I'll definitely be getting some. But compared to what normally is going on this time of year, I mean, cucumbers also don't like the real hot weather. So I think between bugs and weather, they've really had a struggle. And then the final bed down here is the cucumelons and Swiss chard. Got to harvest the Swiss chard too. Cucumelons, we always plant them really thick. And they are now starting to go up the, uh, the trellis. And eventually this whole thing will be filled to the top with the cucumelons. And we will have a cucumelon wall.
grape for pickling, that will make up for the, the lower cucumber crop, I think. Back here are the elderberries. So we had all these big, beautiful blossoms on them, but oh, there's almost no berries, and I think the birds are getting to them before they even turn right. See if I can get this on the camera here. So you see we've got a few little berries on there that are green, but look how many are missing. And this is what all the patches look like. Um, so I didn't think that the birds would eat them when they were like that. I thought that they would wait until they actually turned purple. But I mean, we do have mixes of berries throughout, but compared to the amount of blossoms that we had, the fact that we are missing so many berries is kind of sad, but we'll see what it turns out like. I still see green ones in there. So I guess that's kind of it for the, the garden tour this year, or this year, <laughs> this time around, this week. Um, I meant to make these um, shorter, more condensed, but I tend to ramble on, so I'm sorry about that, but I, I hope you find some of this stuff interesting on um, me sharing my garden with you and what I've got growing and the challenges that I, I go through. And a lot of this stuff, the reason why I'm not doing like a, a shorter, I guess, weekly update is because I cover so many different things in my other short videos uh, where I'm doing more of single plant focus, um, projects and bugs and other stuff to help answer questions that you might have. Um, so anyway, that's the garden as of July 13th. So we're about hitting the peak. So, you know, it's, it's harvesting time, getting zucchini, uh, Swiss chard. Um, I can harvest some dill. I haven't yet, but I, I need to. Um, you know, beans are coming on. Cucumbers are starting. Tomatoes aren't ripe yet, but we're, we're getting close. We're getting really close. So can't wait to eat those fresh gar garden tomatoes. Um, so garden's not quite at the peak yet because normally this would be the peak time for us. We're, we're in zone 6B, um, but because we had such a cold late spring, everything went in later. So the garden is kind of, the peak is behind from what I have normally experienced in the past. That's okay. You know, it's a, it's a labor of love. And uh, since I got laid off uh, about a month ago now, I lost my job. Um, I have plenty of time to garden. Uh, so, you know, of course there's gonna be challenges to that, but with the pandemic and the economic downturn, uh, my company did some cutbacks and I was one of the cutbacks. So after nine years, I'm, I'm not there anymore. And now I spend all my time doing the gardening stuff. So we will see where that takes us. Um, there you go the garden. Hope you are having a great day. Thanks for stopping by and checking out this video. And please subscribe to our channel and uh, click on the little bell so that you get all the updates for any time that we upload new content. Um, while I do do these uh, occasional rambling garden tours, most of my stuff uh, here on this channel is uh, shorter informational and how to. So uh, anyway, guess that's it. Hope you're having a great day. Namaste.